Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. So we've been doing science on screen with the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation for a number of years. Uh, and tonight is the national evening of science on screen, meaning all the science on screen venues around the country, and there's dozens of them, are, are doing shows the same night. And we, the thing is with science on screen, we don't go to the Sloan Foundation and say, hey, what do you want us to show? We kind of come up with it. We find a movie that we like, and then we put it together, and we find a guest, and then we bring the guest, and we talk to the guest, and we have a, a, a dialogue between the guest and you guys, and the guest and the moderator, which is usually me. And um, I, I got to say, over all the years I've been doing it, I've had such amazing luck. The people that I've met, sometimes the people that are still in my lives, in my life, from, from doing this uh, series, it's been so special. But just to do a little inside baseball on this one, two months ago, I started reaching out and trying to find <laughs> guests to do this who were both medical doctors and had an expertise in acupuncture, because that's what this movie is largely about. Uh, and I got to tell you, it has never been harder than this. Until last week, it's during South by Southwest. I'm watching three, four movies a day, and I'm pulling my hair out, and I'm like, how am I ever going to find a guest? I've called everyone. Uh, and so I called the AOMA, the AOMA School of Integrative Medicine, and I talked to someone named Perry there. And Perry, uh, and I said, I said Perry, I, I, you don't know me, but I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know, I'm trying to find an MD who can talk knowledgeably about Eastern medicine and, uh, and acupuncture and in the course of detox. And she was like, oh, well just get Dr. Shen. And I got to say, I've been going through this stuff for two months. And she was like, oh, he's just walking right through the room right now. <laughs> um, so that's how I ended up meeting this wonderful person that you're going to meet in just a minute, uh, Dr. Zhao Tian Shen. Uh, and he has uh, consented to join us. And I got to say, for my first few moments of talking to him, he's a hell of a dude. We're going to have a lot of fun talking to Dr. Are there Dr. Shen students here or former students? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a great time talking to Dr. Shen after this movie. But first, let me tell you a little bit about the movie. This is a movie, uh, when, when we think about the Black Panthers, if we know anything about the Black Panthers, we, we may just sort of think, oh, there's a bunch of guys going through the streets carrying rifles and who are uh, teaching self-defense, perhaps. But the Black Panthers, and you'll see in the story, but Black Panthers, young lords um, who were working together, there was a lot going on. The Black Panthers were serving breakfast to kids who were not otherwise getting breakfast in schools. Poor kids, black and white poor kids. They were teaching classes in uh, symbolic logic on the streets to teach people how to think better. And you'll see what you'll see in this is an initiative from the Young Lords and the Black Panthers to treat um, drug addiction. Because there were over 100,000 heroin addicts in New York at the time in the early 70s, and nobody was really doing much about it. So they look and they see a hospital in the Bronx that's just sitting empty, and they do a takeover of the hospital. Can you imagine the, the, uh, the amount of work and thought that went into that? And what they, what they ended up finding is they were using acupuncture techniques to treat um, um, people who were in heroin recovery, th their symptoms that they were having uh, of, um, of uh, what do you call it, uh, the withdrawal symptoms. They were treating that using acupuncture. So that's what you're going to see in this film. It's a fascinating document. It's a fascinating social document. And then because of the whole sort of introduction of the techniques of acupuncture that they're using, it also becomes like a fascinating medical and scientific uh, document. So. Let me tell you about this guy who's going to join us in just a minute. So he is the special, he is the medical director of professional clinics at AOMA Graduate School of Integrative Medicine, and he's a master of public health, an MD, licensed acupuncturist, uh, and he grew up in a family of multiple generations of Chinese medicine practitioners. Uh, he's surrounded in his home by, uh, by conversations about philosophies of medicine, and now um, he's been teaching for uh, many years and practicing for many years, and we're so lucky to have him tonight. I've just wanted to have Dr. Shane come up and say a couple of words before we watch the movie, and then afterwards, we'll sit down in a couple of chairs on this stage, and then we'll have a great conversation. So please, take the stage now, Dr. Xiaotian Shen. Thank you all. Thank you, Lars, as well. And uh, uh, I think this is you call a uh, science on screen night. So this is actually an opportunity for the uh, community, especially the uh, mainstream community, to give some uh, 
a recognition to what we have been practicing for a very long time that is called alternative medicine and acupuncture. So a lot of my friends are here today, and to my great surprise, and uh, we, uh, I thought I didn't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> I think the reason they came here is not because they come here for me, is I think this is the, it's because you, they come here. The reason because of you is because you gave us the recognition of what we have been doing all the time. So I'm looking forward to this opportunity to share with everybody about what we're doing and why we're doing all this, how what we're doing can be a useful tool to you and help you in many different ways in your life. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. My pleasure, thank you. All right, think up, your, think up your best questions, stuff you've always wanted to know, uh, thoughts that you have while watching the movie, and we will see you guys again in 80 minutes. Enjoy the movie. All right, here we go. All right, I'd like to welcome back uh, Dr. Shen to the stage. Come on up. All right, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Now, I should mention that... Uh, uh, Dr. Shen obviously is qualified to talk about medical aspects here. There's a whole lot of social history. We could have an entirely different discussion about the social history here, but I wanted to be sure that we had a chance to talk about some of the, uh, not only the uh, issues about acupuncture, but perhaps even some of the issues about medical ethics that sort of intersect our lives. That's right, talking about the medical ethics, mm -hmm. I, uh, this movie reminded me my uh, earlier career life when I was in China as a resident doctor in the hospital in China. I don't have, I don't hold a MD title here in the US, but uh, uh, I have been a very proud acupuncturist mm -hmm. in Austin area for over 20 years. And uh, I um, have seen the uh, changes and development of acupuncture and, and alternative medicine um, developing our community in the past over 20 years. Um, I think one of the uh, ethical issues related to medicine is that medicine as a part of healthcare, medicine is not the only part of the healthcare. Medicine is a small part of the healthcare. Medicine as a part of healthcare need to empower people, need to give people the choices, need to help people to make their life better. That will be the fundamental principle of medicine and healthcare, uh, including acupuncture as a part of the choices of modern people's healthcare, mm -hmm. is going to support that moral principle of healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, in the um, past, Acupuncture was not only allowed by the mainstream in New York, but also in Texas, acupuncture has only become legalized since early 1990s. Really? And before wow. that, practicing acupuncture in Texas was illegal. So I know some acupuncturists wow. were, you know, uh, castrated uh, for practicing acupuncture, even in early 1990s. That's amazing. I had, I had no idea. Um, so I want to get some questions from the audience in a few minutes. But first, um, if you don't mind, uh, tell us, w at this point, so many people use acupuncture. It is so popular. It is so widely used. We know it works. Why does acupuncture work? Yes, that's a good question. But talking about acupuncture has been so widely accepted, I have to say that at the beginning, when people ask me when I you know, started my career here in late 1990s, last century in Austin area. Uh, <laughs> um, people, when, when I say uh, I'm an acupuncturist, mm -hmm. the, the common question, common response from people will be, what is acupuncture? Mm -hmm. And now when I tell people I'm doing acupuncture, people say, oh, I'm afraid of needles. <laughs> acupuncture is probably not for me. So <laughs> nobody asks the question what acupuncture is anymore. Mm -hmm. So as you say to that, acupuncture has gained so, many, so much uh, popularity among our general population. How acupuncture works is that, generally speaking, we look at the uh, uh, health or our body conditions from the traditional Chinese medical perspective and so-called conventional Western medical perspective very differently. Uh, from the Chinese medical perspective, 
we view the body as an uh, integrated whole system. So the one of the principles of acupuncture and uh, Asian medicine, including Chinese medicine, is so-called holism. We uh, try not to cure the imbalance of one system by throwing another system of your body into imbalance. So we view your whole body as integrated whole system. Uh, so that leads us to a practice that could be slightly different from the conventional Western medicine. For example, when we treat your, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, withdraw symptoms from substance misuse or abuse, right? We don't only view that as so-called uh, withdraw symptoms. We look at a condition of a human being as a whole system. We look at what has what organs have been affected in this process of the uh, 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 substance abuse or, uh, or uh, misuse. We look at your emotions. We look at your uh, sleep. We look at your um, um, whole system instead of just one system. So that will be a difference between the practice of conventional Western medicine and Chinese medicine. In regard to the scientific evidence of how acupuncture or other elements of East Asian, medi uh, Asian medicine, including Chinese medicine works, there are a lot of research done. Uh, I know somebody's gonna ask me this question, so I did a little research this afternoon. And uh, <laughs> uh, we didn't use that, uh, our, uh, we, we didn't, I didn't use the uh, paid medical database we have in our school. Instead, I used the, um, widely accessible Google Scholar search engine. Yes. And it use the keywords acupuncture. Um, um, uh, let's say I use the keywords acupuncture with draw symptoms or acupuncture diction and then mechanism. There are literally thousands even to, if you diff depend upon what keywords you use, even tens of thousands of articles uh, in this field. So the general consensus how acupuncture works for detoxification is that it stimulates the secretion or the balance of uh, serotonin sure. and uh, other chemicals as well, including um, opiates, and also stimulates the brain electric uh, activities inside your brain cells and improves the uh, circulation in the body. So there are many different mechanisms working behind the acupuncture and herbal medicine. It depends on what conditions you treat. So usually the scientific explanation of how acupuncture works for those conditions will be different. But there are widely accessible uh, researches on the internet. Even though it's, it's practically impossible to do a double blind study uh, on acupuncture, because how would you, what would your placebo be if you were to do that? I don't know how you would exactly do that, but. Uh, there are some studies could be done Double blinded. Uh, it seems like you, you really get something from the uh, science on screen. Um, <laughs> of course, the. Work uh, with me here, Doc. <laughs> uh, you, you are very knowledgeable, I have to say. And one example was that a study published on JAMA mm -hmm. uh, in the field of using electroacupuncture treating uh, urinary incontinence uh, among uh, older women. That's uh, a study that is uh, that meets all the rigor uh, scientific standards of modern research, including the double blind. In that case, I think the double blind was done through so-called sham acupuncture. There's a whole set of techniques for you to set up that. Uh, so there are, uh, I have to say that actually there are some uh, studies in the field of acupuncture can meet the very rigorous standard of scientific research. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I wonder if anyone in our audience, because we've got some pretty knowledgeable people in our audience here, they've learned it from you. Uh, I wonder if anybody in our audience has a question or, uh, or even a, just a comment or a contribution they would like to, uh, to send up here for the discussion. Anyone? Everyone's very frightened. I see a hand in the back. Uh, the uh, general theory on that is that 
in a um, um, primitive society, people, when people suffer from illness, especially the pains and all kinds of symptoms, they really rub certain areas in their body. And through that, nowadays considered to be so-called acupressure, they discovered that certain points could alleviate certain symptoms or some sets of symptoms. Therefore, they uh, documented their findings um, about uh, the interaction between the stimulation of certain areas, certain points, certain lines in our body, and uh, the response of their symptoms and illness. And they have accumulated that knowledge through thousands of years. Um, then they gradually start not only just to use the stones, not only just using their own fingers, or their fingers to press on so-called acupuncture points or pressure points in the uh, primitive stage of, of our human history. They gradually started to use uh, bamboo acupuncture needles, bone acupuncture needles, then later um, bronze acupuncture needles, iron acupuncture needles, steel acupuncture needles, et cetera. So they gradually um, improved the instruments they used to stimulate certain areas or uh, points on their body in response to different set of symptoms. And that is a very gradual development process. So acupuncture is not invented by just one person or one generation of people. It is uh, uh, inherited knowledge for many thousands of years uh, within very large group of population. I don't know if that answers the question. All right, we talk about thousands of years. So uh, have there been innovations in, in acupuncture uh, within uh, recent human history? Have there been any innovations, or, or are we pretty much practicing acupuncture now as it would have been pra practiced with bone needles or bamboo needles thousands of years ago? Uh, when you come to our clinic, you are not going to see any bone needles or bamboo needles. <laughs> we use a single use sterilized the needles, steel, uh, uh, stainless steel needles sure. on everybody, and then discard, discard all the used needles. We do not reuse those needles. I saw in 1970s the acupuncturists uh, reuse the acupuncture needles. Yeah. The other innovations will be um, in the areas of diagnosis and uh, treatments in terms of the areas of treatment. One very common device you will see in any regular acupuncture clinic will be electroacupuncture machine. Electric. Yeah, electroacupuncture machine. For example, one of the studies I mentioned a little bit earlier that was using electroacupuncture to stimulate the acupuncture points in the sacral area to uh, uh, to reduce the symptoms of urinary incontinence among older uh, female patients. That was published on JAMA, I think it's June issue of 2017 on JAMA. Uh, but we use the uh, electroacupuncture to treat wide variety of conditions, especially pain management, and sometimes also treat some functional disorders of the interior organs as well. Uh, so the needles we're using are a lot more sophisticated. We use the electroacupuncture machine. We also use uh, uh, infrared lamps. Uh, the uh, other devices we use have also been uh, improved. For example, the MAXA devices we use, it, et cetera. In terms of in the areas of diagnosis, we widely utilize the diagnosed uh, uh, tools used in conventional Western medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we usually will encourage our patients to first consult their primary care providers and uh, obtain uh, conventional Western medical diagnosis before they come to see acupuncturists. So we utilize their diagnosis to help us in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture to make a more uh, specific or more targeted diagnosis as well. So that will be probably the most innovation, the biggest innovation mm -hmm. in the practice of traditional Chinese, which is the utilization of modern diagnostic tools. Sure, sure, which I'm sure must be very helpful. Are, do, you, do you find that uh, often uh, practitioners of what we might call orthodox 
uh, Western medicine are uh, refer patients to an uh, uh, acupuncturist or to holistic a lot. practitioners? A lot. We have patients say, oh, my neurologist told me you should get an acupuncture treatment. Or actually, yesterday I had a patient who's a doctor. So mm -hmm. I addressed him as a doctor X Y Y in the waiting room. The other patients were just looking at him. <laughs> and he's a doctor. <laughs> and he told me in the room, he said, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to give myself a steroid shot. I said, oh, I, I said, this is my work. You can save a steroid shot. So I also had other doctors, a uh, surgeon, wanted mm -hmm. to get acupuncture treatment for sciatic pain. So he didn't have to get a surgery for sciatic pain. Um, I have uh, multiple patients who are uh, nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a nurse patient who's uh, uh, going through uh, cancer treatment, chemotherapy, mm -hmm. etc. And so the short answer to your question is yes. We get a lot of referrals from the conventional um, medical communities. Mm -hmm. um, it be has become more and more natural for the conventional medical doctors to consider acupuncture uh, China's herbal medicine as an alternative tool for them to take care of their patients' health care needs. And also the health care providers themselves uh, are a lot more open to receive acupuncture uh, as a treatment modality to take care of their own health care needs, as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier. So from being illegal to being referred to by, by doctors in only 30 years. That's pretty amazing. That is amazing. And uh, so when I watched the movie, I just realized, wow, there's so much wonderful history about acupuncture in the United States I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've learned a lot. How many of you knew about any of that stuff? Because yeah, a few of you did, yeah. Because until I saw this movie, I had no idea about uh, all of that going on, that, that clinic and, and the, the sort of power to the people angle of it. Was there anything that you saw in the film where you looked at it and you were like, oh, no, we knew, we, they're doing it wrong or we know how to do that better, you know? It was like, oh, oh and also I, was, I wanted to ask the questions. It's like, it seemed like almost everything was concentrated on the ear, and that seems different from the, uh, many of the acupuncture treatments that I've seen. Oh, that, uh, I'm going to have very long answers to that question. <laughs> please do, please, <laughs> please. Uh, first of all, my first response was that I said, wow, I need to go back to the cinema more. I need to watch a movie. Damn right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been <laughs> in the cinema <laughs> for a while. Yeah. And I started to realize the smell in the cinema and uh, the sound effect in cinema. <laughs> and also the visual effect in cinema is so different from me staring at my big screen at home. Um, put that part aside. <laughs> and <laughs> talking about uh, the history of acupuncture, so I knew very little about that part of the history mm -hmm. of acupuncture before I watched the movie today. Um, in terms of uh, what else we can do besides they have done in the movie by needling the points uh, in the ear, um, I would say there are more nowadays we could do uh, to deal with the conditions mentioned in the movie. Mm -hmm. We are, we have more tools. We could do general um, body acupuncture. Acupuncture and uh, uh, Eastern Asian medicine is a modality that tends to customize to individuals each visit condition instead of one size fits all treatment for everybody. So every time when you come into a clinic session, we're gonna find out what is, what is happening in your body this time. And your condition is different from the patient next door. Even if you share the same Western medical diagnosis, let's say hypertension or diabetes. But when we look at uh, those two individual patients, they're two individual human beings and people. So their conditions are different in our eyes, and in their, the, the diagnosis they receive from us from the acupuncture perspective will be different as well. Therefore, the treatments will be different. So acupuncture is the Asian, Asian medicine will be, be um, individualized. Um, so when we are treating individuals battling the withdrawal symptoms from uh, either smoking cigarettes or uh, substance abuse, we tend to 
individualize our uh, assessment, our diagnosis and treatment to different individuals. Instead of only using ear acupuncture nowadays, we'll probably do a wide range of uh, acupuncture sets um, on that individual for, for that individual's different conditions. So that would be something we're going to be doing slightly different instead of only the needles on the uh, uh, ear. And we do still utilize uh, so-called NADA, the ear acupuncture, as a very important tool to treat uh, a lot of those uh, so-called uh, withdrawal symptoms. And uh, very commonly we use that treatment protocol to treat a cigarette withdrawal. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually, in before the pandemic, we had a free community acupuncture clinic for uh, smoking cessation. We use those scalp, uh, we use those ear acupuncture very often. Uh, besides regular body acupuncture, ear acupuncture, we can do scalp acupuncture, we can do Chinese herbs. We can incorporate a lot of different treatment modalities into the entire set of the care for that individual. So uh, nicotine withdrawal is considerably different from opioid or opiate withdrawal. Um, and yet the working with the ear, the, with the points in the ear is still is still what you would use there. That's very interesting. That's right, because uh, um, I often tell uh, our patients that um, not only acupuncture, but in my personal opinion, I don't think that there's any medicine in the world will make you to make that hard decision that you want to stop smoking cigarette or you want to stop using heroin or other substances. Mm -hmm. You have to be that person responsible making that decision. Then the uh, um, acupuncture treatments or even other modality of treatments can help you to deal with the withdrawal symptoms and help you to tran transition from one stage of your life to a new stage of your life. <laughs> now in terms of the withdrawal symptoms from uh, substance abuse or smoking cigarettes, there are some similarities in those two types of withdrawal symptoms. Um, there are uh, some differences in their degrees of the uh, suffering in the process of the transition. But the uh, primary symptoms are very similar to each other. As therefore, some of those similar treatment proctos, procto uh, those treatment uh, proctos can be used for one set of symptoms and also another set of symptoms as well. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's not one size fits all in terms of the treatment, but the, there are similarities there, yeah. There are some similarities there. I, I bet we've got some really good questions from the audience now that people have had some time to think. I see a hand all the way in the back. Oh, um, that part of the, uh, I was very young at that time, in early 1990s. You were a child. I'm not quite a child. I already uh, have been licensed as a doctor in China, but I was not here in the U.S., in Texas. Uh, I was licensed uh, in early 1990s. I think the uh, most resistance was from the established interest groups in the healthcare community. Because if we have one more group of healthcare providers coming into this industry or business, and a part of that cake is going to be cut from the table. Especially um, if yours works a little better. <laughs> um, so there's still, yeah, that's right, yeah.
over interest. But you should interview her. Yeah, I know. This, a lot is, about this is what's wonderful about these is you look out in the audience and you've got experts in the audience sometimes. So that's remarkable. But yeah, it's, it's very much the, what you sort of speculated, which is that, um, that, that others who had sort of a vested interest in keeping the status quo, you know, didn't want to change so much and allow other people in. That's right. But back to the one of the first questions you asked me earlier was that what is the uh, um, ethical principle in any medicine, I think it's, it, it, any medical practice should be centered around the patient's interest. And, and uh, when, whenever you give the patients more choices, you empower the patients. And uh, that is the best for the patients. You don't have to force everybody to receive acupuncture. Just make it available for people whenever they need it, whenever their doctors recommend that. There's something there for them to use to help them with their health problems and improve their health outcomes as well. So again, you know, I want to echo what you have just said is that um, this is not, on the surface, it is about the uh, political fight over the control or resources or revenue, but at the very bottom of it, did we really take the patient need into consideration? Did we take the people's need into consideration? Mm -hmm. Does that benefit people more if we give them more options? Or it actually protects the people more if we take away some of options from them? So my answer is that the more options, the people will be more empowered in their decision-making process. And that is the best for people. Excellent. So uh, on that note, with that round of applause, I want to ask you a few questions about uh, what it is you're doing over at AOMA, um, so the, or AOMA, I don't AOMA, know how much, yes. AOMA. Um, because when, I, when, when you got here, there were a number of your students here, and they were wonderful people, and they just lit up when they saw you. So it seems like you must be doing something right over there. So tell us, tell us what goes on over there. Um, I'm different from most of the other new immigrants. I have never changed any jobs ever since I landed here in Austin. And AOMA is the only place I w work for. What we do uh, at AOMA is mm, there are two core um, tasks that we usually do at AOMA. One is education. Another one is patient care. As you saw in the movie, patient care can provide services to limited amount of people by limited amount of acupuncturists, healthcare providers. At a certain stage of that healthcare so-called business, you have to think, what, we can, what can we do to increase our capacity? in order for us to serve a wider uh, range of people to serve a bigger community. So that is where our educational part of the um, business come in. So AOMA is basically a higher education institution for acupuncture, for um, Chinese medicine, and also uh, for uh, East Asian medicine. Uh, along with that core business we uh, have devoted to, we also provide a wide range of healthcare to the members of our community. We have a professional clinic where you can be treated by licensed acupuncturists. We also have very wonderful student intern clinic, and most of the uh, folks that shared at me a little bit earlier um, were either our alumni or our culinary students. They provide wonderful services in the student intern clinic where we provide um, very affordable care to the uh, community. We also have uh, an app store. I saw Iona earlier, one of the nice young ladies. We greeted a little bit earlier. She works at the app store. So we provide not only acupuncture treatment, but also uh, alternative medical uh, mm, materials. Mm -hmm. 
uh, including the herbs we gave to the patients. Well, I, di I, I did a little bit of, believe it or not, this is going to just shock people. I did some research uh, when I was first calling around, and uh, the, the graduate school has extraordinary reputation. It's kind of considered sort of a, the Harvard or the Princeton uh, in, uh, in the whole country in terms of the uh, education that you're providing. So it seems like you're doing something right over there. Dr. Shen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure these guys are, are thank thankful you for too. having me. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody.